Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the SnapCycle S1 Fat Tire Folding Electric Bike. So let's get into it. Before we get into the walk around, if you are looking to purchase any SnapCycle electric bike, be sure to check out the link in the description. There's a code for $50 off and using our link also helps support eBike Escape. Thanks in advance for your support. I will also put links to our electric bike accessories list, top eBike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page where I track all the deals on the electric bike brands that I follow. With that, let's get into the walk around of the Snap Cycle. And you'll notice we have it in our now infamous tote. This tote has made it in a lot of folding electric bike reviews and the Snap Cycle fits in here perfectly. We'll be sure to put on the screen the dimensions of this tote in case you do wanna purchase one, though I would recommend purchasing a little bit more of a heavy duty tote. So we'll start this walk around off with actually taking it out of the tote and putting the bike back together. All right, let's get this bike out of the tote here. Definitely a pretty heavy folding electric bike, though that's what I would expect for a bike that has this size battery. We'll get into all of the specs, and actually, let's start off with the battery because, of course, this one is integrated right into the frame. Now, something to keep in mind with these batteries on these folding electric bikes is you do need to have the bike in half in order to remove the battery. Now here in Wisconsin, I personally like to bring our batteries in, so that can be a little bit more cumbersome. Of course, if you're riding in the summer or when the weather's nice, you can just leave the battery in here. It can be charged both on and off the bike. Go ahead and remove the battery here. The keys do need to be in the bike in order for the bike to function. And there is a locking pin that keeps this battery in place. Now this is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery, about average capacity, I would say for an electric bike priced at $14.99. Again, $50 off with the code in the description. Go ahead and put the battery back in here. Lock the battery back into place. Again, that key has to remain in place for the bike to function. And this bike folds like many of the other folding electric bikes that I've reviewed. I'm going to lift the handlebars up, make sure they're locked into place. Lift up on the center of the frame here. And I'll give you a close up of the latching system in our walk around here in just a second. And put the kickstand down and unfold the pedals. All right, there you have it, the SnapCycle S1 unfolded. I will note they do have a full-size fat tire electric bike as well. I believe it's called the R1 and the R1 step through. Let's actually start up here in the front of the bike for the walk around. We have CST BFT 20 by four inch wide tire. So true fat tires here, and they do have some tread on them in case you want to take this bike off road. We have 180 millimeter rotors up front and a bolt-on axle. And one thing that is interesting is they have markings around the bike. I'll try to point them out. And this is something that I've only ever seen on the Serial One electric bikes by Harley Davidson. And they mark this, if I'm not mistaken, so you'll be able to see that this bolt has perhaps loosened up so you can address it. So it's somewhat of a safety thing and so kind of interesting that such an affordable brand is doing that. Maybe if someone knows something different about this in the description, I believe it is more for motorcycles and I'm not very familiar with motorcycles. 
All right, next let's take a look at these brakes. So these are mechanical disc brakes. These are unbranded. And in my opinion, this is something that they could improve on on this electric bike. I've ridden it around a little bit and I would like to see them go with a name brand mechanical disc brake here. All right, next we have the fenders. So it does come with front and rear fenders. I would say these fenders are pretty basic. They don't come quite as far down as some of the other fenders I've seen. And of course there is no fender in front of the front fork here either. So not the nicest fenders I've seen, but certainly they're gonna provide you at least some protection. Let's talk about the front light. This is an integrated light. Note that this bike just comes with an integrated front light, no rear light. And in my opinion, we were riding this bike out the other day and my wife was riding this bike and I was actually pretty impressed with this front light as far as daylight visibility goes. Of course, at night it's going to be even better. Of course, if you're riding often in the daylight, you might wanna consider an external rechargeable light as well. I really like the ones that blink. All right, front fork wise, we have a suspension fork with preload adjustment and it does have a lockout as well with multiple clicks here so you can adjust it. And I'll go ahead and push on this front suspension, make sure it's not locked out. And it actually feels pretty good. I'm actually pretty impressed with this front suspension. So nice job, snap cycle, by not cheaping out on the front suspension. I could definitely feel the additional comfort from that front suspension. And of course you have the fat tires as well that help out. I always like to point out the cable management and I think snap cycle did a really nice job with this. You can see there's a little bit of cable wrapping up here to keep the cables on both sides together. And then they're wrapped very nicely all the way down into the frame. And then the cables run underneath the frame as you can see here. And that's really common on these folding electric bikes that have the battery inside the frame here. And those cables come on both sides. Here's a look at the folding mechanism right here. This is simply a latch. You simply push this in and pull it out. And that allows you to fold the handlebars. Something worth calling out is the adjustable handlebars here. That's why you'll see additional length on these cables is so if you're a taller rider, you can undo this quick release and lift the handlebars up or all the way down. Perhaps if you're a shorter rider, just note that just like seat posts, there is a minimum insertion line on these. Another thing with these handlebars is there is another quick release right here. And if you undo that, that allows you to turn the handlebars to your liking. All right, let's move on to the cockpit. I already talked about the unbranded mechanical disc brakes. They also have unbranded levers up here, though there are motor cutoffs as we see on many electric bikes, almost all electric bikes in fact. We have some rubber grips on the SnapCycle S1. And let's check out the controls. We have the power button right here. And we have this monochrome display. I do like that this display is nice and large. Now you do have an M button that's going to change settings on the display. Let's go through those settings. So currently we're on the speed and you can also see the pedal assist level on the right side, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Hitting that M button, we have average speed, max speed, and then back to the current speed. And hitting the M button, we also get trip distance, odometer, and time. And you can see we have a battery capacity indicator here. Just using the bars, I really like the ones that use percentages. Just something to keep in mind with this electric bike. It is pretty easy to read this miles per hour. With some electric bikes, these displays can be more difficult to read. So I always like when they have a display that's a little bit easier to read. Now there are advanced settings on the SnapCycle S1. They have actually a really good user guide on their display. So definitely check that out if you do purchase any of their electric bikes. I'll talk a little bit more about that in our first person riding footage. We have a simple Shimano thumb shifter that I see on many electric bikes. Very basic thumb shifter, though it does get the job done and adequate for a majority of riders. Something I really like about the SnapCycle S1 is we have a right hand twist grip throttle as opposed to a thumb throttle. Now user preference, but I personally prefer the twist grip throttles. Now I already showed you that the battery is housed inside of the frame here, and this is where you can charge the battery while it is in the frame. We do have a class two sticker here, 
This bike does come shipped as a class two electric bike, limited to 20 miles per hour with the throttle or while pedaling, though I did override it. Stay tuned for our first person riding footage. And just a closer look at where some of those cables run, we have the cadence pedal assist sensor cable running right by the seat tube here. And we have other cables here for the motor as well as the disc brake in the rear. If you're wondering what this is, this is a stand for when the bike is folded. Most folding electric bikes these days come with these, though I have heard from someone recently who said some people are opting to cut these off because there is a chance, depending on where you're riding, perhaps more off-road applications, there is a chance you'll hit this. So just something to be aware of. I personally wouldn't cut this off my electric bike, but I thought it was interesting and something I hadn't heard of before, so I thought I would share it with you all. All right, let's talk about the pedals. These are Welgo pedals, and of course they do fold, which is nice for a folding electric bike. Makes it a little bit more compact. The kickstand on this bike is located towards the rear, not going to come in contact with the pedals. Always something that I personally appreciate. And because this is a very unique bike, they do have the seat post that kind of comes all the way down so you can have the cranks here. This is somewhat of a familiar design you'll see on many of these folding electric bikes that I will call a high step, though there are electric bike brands that are able to change the, this top tube and make it more of a step through. While we're here, let's talk about the saddle, a very standard saddle. If you're looking for something more comfortable, check out our electric bike accessories list. That's where I post the most popular ones that I see people purchase. All right, there's a closer look at the rear disc brake, again, with that paint here. So you know if this nut ends up coming loose, and we do have a very heavy duty rear rack here. Looks like it has some pannier holders. You just wanna make sure they can fit on this thicker bar here. And I think that the rear rack actually adds to the aesthetics on the SnapCycle S1 as well. And the rear fender is very similar to the front fender here. Again, it doesn't come quite as far on the back tire as I would like to see. And as I mentioned, there is a spot for a light here, though there is no integrated rear light included. Let's move on to the rear of the bike here. You can see we have a snap cycle, at least branding here on the rear hub motor. 750 watt nominal, 1200 watt peak. We'll dig into the motor performance in a little bit when we get to the first person riding footage. In the rear here, we have a Shimano Turney rear derailleur, one of the more basic derailleurs that Shimano sells, though I am happy to see a name brand back here. And you do have a derailleur guard as well. In the rear, we have 14 to 28 teeth, and up front, we have a double walled chainring, 46 teeth. While it is double walled, it does have this plastic guard. Sometimes you'll find that these are metal. Definitely just a small thing, though something I wanted to point out. And again, some of those cables running underneath the frame here to the rear for the derailleur. The motor cable again is on the other side. And again, on this style frame design, you don't really have a chain stay, so nothing to worry about as far as chain slap goes. Again, wanted to point out that these keys do need to be in the bike in order for you to ride it. And here is the latch that is the main folding point for this electric bike. Very similar to ones I've seen on many folding electric bikes. You simply lift this up and then you can pull this out and then you're able to fold the bike. All right, that concludes the walk around of the SnapCycle S1 folding electric bike. Let's get into some first person riding footage and see what this motor can do. All right, let's get into some first person riding footage on the SnapCycle S1. One thing I wanted to point out on the display is there is an H, M, and L, and that seems to coincide with how much power there are bars that go up depending on how much power you're using from the bike. Another thing I wanted to call out is this bike does come shipped as a class two electric bike, top speed of 20 miles per hour with the throttle or while pedaling, but they do advertise class three and you can do that by getting into the advanced settings. You can hit the M button twice quickly. I believe that's how you do it. Just be sure that you're following all local laws and regulations. I do have this overridden so we can get the true sense of the power of this electric bike. Our first test will be throttle only. So it should cut off at 20 miles per hour. We'll see here, I do have the speedometer app by Coolnix and we'll see what this bike can do. All right, three, two, one, throttle only. 
and the pedal assist does coincide with how much power the throttle gives you. And there's 21, and I can feel the motor cutting off. So what they did to kind of comply with class two regulations or class three regulations is they have the throttle actually cut off at 20 miles per hour. Now there are some bikes that when you override it, the throttle does allow you to go over 20 miles per hour, but that kind of is a gray area as far as regulation goes because a class three electric bike technically doesn't have a throttle and some companies are obviously putting a throttle on the electric bike and then just having it cut off at 20 miles per hour. All right, now let's get into the various pedal assist modes. I'll actually start in pedal assist one and I will shift down here. Third gear here, nice leisurely pace going about eight miles an hour, nine miles an hour. I would say pretty, pretty nice motor engagement with that first pedal assist. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist two. Definitely feel a little bit more power there. Going to need to shift up fourth, fifth. Still pedaling at a pretty leisurely cadence, maybe even six gear here, if you wanted to get a little bit of a workout. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist three. Again, feel the motor kick in there. See those bars going up, telling me that the motor is using a little bit more power. 16 miles an hour. And again, they advertised this as a 750 watt motor that peaks at 1200 watts. Let's go ahead and go into Pelsis 4. Again, feel that coming, that motor really kicking in. Seventh gear here, and my legs are definitely starting to spin. And I apologize if there's some wind noise. So I would have liked to maybe see the bike geared a little bit higher so you can pedal in the higher pedal assist levels. So I'm going 20 miles an hour. And it's a little bit difficult to provide some of my own power to the bike. And when we get to the straightaway here, we'll see what this bike is truly capable of. All right, display shows 22, so it's reading a little bit higher than the phone at 20. Let's go ahead, Pelsis 5. Again, feel a lot of power. And I'm really just ghost pedaling, just spinning the pedals, which is engaging the motor, but I'm not providing any of my own power. And I'm going 24, 25 miles an hour. If I really spin my legs, I can provide a tiny extra bit of power, but more than likely, you're gonna be ghost pedaling in Pedal Assist 5. All right, and I do get the question quite a bit. Can you pedal whatever electric bike I'm reviewing? Say if you run out of battery or there's issues with the bike, hope that doesn't happen to you. But I am in fifth gear here, very flat, and going about nine miles an hour. So this certainly would be doable, though hills, will definitely be a challenge. Speaking of hills, let's take this bike on our hill climb test and see what this powerful motor is capable of. Okay, here we are at the hill climb test, the hill we test out all of our electric bikes on. We will put a picture on the screen of the hill because the GoPro makes it look so much smaller than it is. We'll also throw on the specs of the hill so you can get an idea of just how steep it is and You'd think in May I wouldn't have to wear gloves, but here we are. Got the speedometer app and going to turn the pedal assist level all the way to five so we get maximum power. Our first test is going to be throttle only. And we'll see what this bike can do. I'm actually pretty curious. Of course, it is going to top out at 20 miles an hour. Now what a lot of people are curious about is the minimum speed going up this hill, especially when compared to other bikes. So you can kind of compare and contrast different bikes that I have reviewed. All right, hill is really just starting now. It says we're going 18 miles an hour. And I'm pretty confident this bike is going to perform well. 
17, 16. Sixteen is the lowest I've seen so far. And that is pretty darn impressive in my opinion. Based off of all of the other electric bikes that I've reviewed. Usually I see around 13-ish or so, uh, even on some of the 750 watt motors that peak a little bit higher. So definitely impressive motor performance on this hill. Minimum speed of 16. I did notice the battery bar went down. I'm sure that's just because of the draw on the battery. So that'll probably go back up, but it's reading one bar now. And we're just about to the top here. And yeah, it seemed like this hill was just nothing for this bike. All right, next up, I'll go back down the hill and we'll see what the bike can do while pedaling. Okay, hill climb test while pedaling. I'm just gonna use the throttle a little bit just to get started and so I can shift down a little bit where I'll actually start off in pedal assist one. Of course we know that this bike is just going to cruise up this hill, but it's always nice to know what it can do while pedaling. Let's see, I'll shift down even more here, maybe all the way into first gear pedal assist one. And I will note when I was going down this hill, this is kind of where I do my brake checks, if you will. And the brakes were able to get me to come to a stop going down the hill. I just wish they would have went with the name brand. That might be my one and only complaint on this bike. Just something that they could improve upon, though you will be able to stop. All right, here we go. First gear on the right, first pedal assist. Working a little bit, I wouldn't say uh, a lot, although the hill is getting steeper here. And so this is definitely where I'd want to go into a higher pedal assist level. Yeah, much better in level two here. Now going about eight miles an hour. Lakes are already starting to spin where I'd want to shift up just to kind of give you an idea of how powerful this motor is. Maybe even third gear here. Pedal assist two, fourth gear. Again, a little bit of a workout here in fourth gear, pedal assist two. All right, let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three. Feel the motor kick on a little bit there. And fifth gear, sixth gear, I think I would even go into seventh gear here just to get a little bit more exercise. So yeah, very impressive, 13 miles an hour. Screen is reading a little bit higher at 15. All right, pedal assist level four. And again, we already know that this motor is plenty capable. Pedal assist five, 16, 17 miles an hour. So no problem flying up this hill, 18 miles an hour. And we're just about to the top. So if you're looking at the snap cycle bikes, motor power is definitely not something I would be concerned with. All right. With that, let's get into some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Snap Cycle folding electric bike. There are tons of folding e-bikes on the market today. There's even brands that are solely focused on selling folding electric bikes for good reason too. Even as someone who has a heavy duty e-bike rated rack, I often find myself throwing a folding e-bike into a tote and throwing it in the trunk. But there's use cases for RVers, apartment dwellers, commuters, or just those short on space. And if I had to say one thing that stood out with the SnapCycle S1, it has to be the power. The 750 watt motor that peaks at 1200 watts paired with a 25 amp controller is undoubtedly impressive. It has to be one of the best performing fat tire e-bikes on our hill climb test. Speaking of the electronics, SnapCycle is using Samsung cells in this 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery. SnapCycle also wanted to point out that they have thermal sensors in the battery to provide both low and high temperature protections. Now they claim that a lot of e-bike batteries do not have this feature, but it's hard to say whether other brands are just not advertising these types of protections or whether they simply don't have them but clearly SnapCycle is proud of their offering. Something else they are proud of is their customer service. 
So if you're considering one of these e-bikes, go ahead and give them a call between 9 and 5 p.m. PST and see what you think. And if you do decide to purchase, use that link in the description to help us keep making videos like this one. If you prefer email, emails are responded to within 24 hours and they offer virtual troubleshooting sessions as well. I put a lot of weight on customer support, so I'll be keeping close tabs on SnapCycle going forward. At $14.99, the SnapCycle S1 is priced well, especially when you consider their R1 and R1 step through, which are currently priced at $16.99 and $17.99 respectively. But back to the S1. I already talked about my wish for name brand brakes and I think more functional fenders and an integrated rear light would make for nice improvements in the next generation. Those who want to avoid ghost pedaling at speeds over 20 miles per hour would also want to consider a 52 tooth front chain ring. Besides that, I have only good things to say about this bike. I like the burly rear rack, suspension, etc. And if their customer support is as good as they claim, I think they're onto something here. The SnapCycle S1 stacks up well against the competition. Again, links in the description to help support eBike Escape. Thanks so much for your support and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.